Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name's Attempster. Today I'm going to be going over part two of how to make bullet holes and sparks in the Blender game engine. So in part one, we went ahead and sort of got this first person shooter setup working and a bullet spawner, and then we also made our bullet holes and our bullet, which then using a Python script would display the bullet holes uh, on the mesh as they hit. So for example here, if I go to layer one and press P, um, we've got some nice animations going, and then if we shoot the floor, we have uh, sort of ground bullets popping up, and then if we shoot this wall here, we have metal bullet holes uh, popping up where the bullet hits. So, that is pretty cool. So we got all that working. Now what we just need to do is get the smoke or dust uh, from when we shoot the ground, and also get the sparks working when we shoot this metal wall. That's what we're going to be doing today, so without further ado, Let's get started. So open up part one. There'll be a link to the finished blend if you haven't gone through part one and just want to sort of get started on part two. So the first thing we want to do is get a spark texture. So I'm going to go to cgtextures.com and then we're going to go under fire and then we're going to go to fireworks and just this first image here is fine. What you preferably want is for all the sparks to be contained within the one image. So uh, maybe something like that might be better than the other ones. So let's just do that one, for example. So I'll click on it, it will download. I think it's 0.1 megabytes, so not too much. And it's called Fireworks 19.8. So then we'll open up GIMP. And then in GIMP here, we'll go to File Open, and then we'll go to our Downloads, and we'll scroll down till we find Fireworks 19.8. And there we go, Fireworks 19.8, and then we'll click Open. Now this texture might need a bit of cleaning up, so again, uh, to move around, you hold down the middle mouse button, and then to scroll in, or zoom in, you hold down control and then obviously you scroll. So the first thing I'm going to do is in this window here, go to under layer and select transparency and add an alpha channel. Then we're going to zoom in and the first thing I'm going to try to do is get rid of this glare. So I guess just airbrush works or even paint and we'll just paint black over it. Okay, so once you have your texture sort of cleaned up and ready to go, then we can go to Colors and select Color to Alpha. And instead of just selecting completely black, what we're going to do is move it over here, click in there, and then choose the Color Select tool. And we want the uh, black from in here, so Color Select tool, and then we'll click in here. And that should add the color. There we go. It is just plain black, so it should work fine. Then we'll click OK, and then back in our window here, we'll click OK as well, and there we go, there's all the background gone. So, once you've done that, we can go to File, and choose Export, and this time we need to save it as PNG, so it saves the alpha channel. And then we'll click Export, you can export it to Documents or somewhere else if you feel that's necessary. Uh, but I'm just going to do a back in downloads. And now we're done with GIMP, so we can close that. And then we can close GIMP. Okay, and now we'll move back into Blender. And we'll go to layer 2. And zoom out a bit. Then we'll press Shift S, cursor to center. And press Shift A and add a plane. And then we'll move that over here. And this is going to be our sparks, so we'll call it sparks and press S to scale and then we'll give it a new material it's going to be no specular and back facing because it's a plane um, and transparency will be on no alpha and then we're going to add a new texture image or movie scroll down select UV and alpha channel and then we'll click open and we'll find our texture so in downloads then I'm going to select this so we can see the images and scroll down there we go this one right here then we'll click open and then press tab in this window U and unwrap 
that'll be the whole texture there now we'll go back into the materials tab here and you have two choices either use shadeless or you can select the emit value and maybe set that to 2 or something but then the uh, color sort of goes off a bit so maybe shadeless is the best option here then we'll move it over this way press shift A add another plane and this is going to be our dust so I'm going to go into the object settings here and call it dust although you can call it smoke or whatever if you'd prefer then I'm going to press S scale it nice and big and we'll give it a new material and then we'll turn off back facing and turn on transparency and set the alpha to zero then we're going to do one more thing click new image or movie and then select UV and the alpha channel as well and then we'll click open and in the description will be a link to a smoke texture I made ages ago so uh, feel free to download that if you don't already have it so I'll just be using this one right here and then I'll click open and then I'll press tab U and unwrap and then we can press tab again to go out of edit mode now one more thing I'm going to do is scroll down here and turn off color and then also what I'm going to do is set the alpha to something like 0.3 so we want it to be uh, not that visible then also in the materials tab I'm just going to change it to a sort of brownish color so in here something like that and so now if we have a light shining on it it will sort of puff up as a brown color so they'll be also sort of matching the bullet hole I think for the earth so now we got that sorted I might actually make it a little darker and a little more colorful so something like that okay cool so then the next thing we need to do is go to our bullet here and what we also want it to do is spawn in our sparks when it hits the wall and spawn in the dust when it hits the ground so we'll select our bullet here and add two edit object actuators and then for the first one um, we'll just make this sparks and the second one can be dust and then for the first one obviously we'll select sparks and for the second one we will select dust so the next thing we need to do is our script here for bullet hole wall or it can just be um, for the ground either one we want to select it all press copy and then make a new text block and then press paste and the space we're going to change it to 0.005 uh, this ray is going to be for the sparks so just ray is fine for the spawn though we want it to be sparks instead of spawn and that should all be fine this is going to be uh, sparks.py then we're going to add a python controller select sparks.py join it up to this ray and then we're going to join it up to sparks and the time for this is going to be around 7 although you can turn it up or down just to sort of customize it and now we're going to add another python controller and join it up to the dust and join it up to ray 1 because ray 1 is the one that uh, sets it to the floor so we want the dust coming off the floor and the sparks off the wall so again we'll have to select all of this press ctrl c to copy and then we'll make a new text block and press paste now you notice the space is 0.005 which we want and then the ray we want to change to ray 1 like for the floor here and instead of sparks we're going to delete that and type in dust then we'll call it dust.py and uh, select it in here okay and the time I'm going to set it to 60 and then we can minimize all that before we do anything else you'll notice these are way too small especially compared to these huge bullet holes so first of all the sparks I'm going to select it, press S, make it uh, something like that. Then the dust, I'm going to do the same, make it nice and big. And then I'm going to go to layer 1, make our window a little bigger. Uh, press numpad 0, press P, and there we go. If we shoot the wall, we get sparks popping up. And if we shoot the floor, at the moment, we're getting uh, dust popping up as well, but it's not moving anywhere. So, 
Um, first of all, what we're going to fix is, if you notice, if we shoot the sparks, they are sort of flat on the wall. So I'm going to go into layer 2 with my spark selected, and then I'm going to press tab and shift D R Y 90. And then press tab to go out of that, and then we'll move it up just a bit. And what we want to do, I'm going to press tab again, go into face select mode, and we want to get these uh, bright parts to join up so it looks a little bit seamless. So something like that should be good. Okay, so back to layer one, and we'll test it. So numpad zero, P, and we'll walk up to this corner here, and we'll shoot it. And yep, we've got it rotated, but we still need to rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm going to select this, and just to fix it, I'm going to press RZ90, and then press enter, and press tab to go out of edit mode. Then go to layer one, press numpad zero, press P, and move over here, and then we'll shoot the wall, and there we go, we've got sparks sort of flying out at us as well. If you don't like that sort of big part coming off, you can edit the texture, or we can go back into here, um, so press tab again, and then press RZ180 to flip it, and then we need to move it, so the uh, bright spot is in the bright position, so somewhere like that should work fine, and now we'll go back to layer 1, press numpad 0, press P, and there we go, we've got them working normally, and if we go on the side, we have them flying out as well. Okay, cool. So, that's the sparks done. Now the dust, um, we need to work on that, so I'm going to go to layer 2, I'm going to select my dust, and I actually want an animation for this, so I want it to sort of start off small, and then I want it to get big and fade out. So I'm going to go to frame 0 down here, then I'm going to press S, and I'm going to make it nice and small, so something like that. Then I'm going to press I, insert scaling, and then I'm going to go to frame 60, and press S, and not too big, so maybe something like that. And then I'm going to press I, insert scaling again. Now because the bullet holes are that big, I might actually go to frame 0 and make it the size of a bullet hole, so maybe something like that, then press I, insert scaling, and now if we press the play button here, um, we get it scaling up nicely, so that's what the animation will look like at that speed. Okay, and then one more thing we want to do is under the material tab here, scroll down and select object color and then we're going to go back to frame 0 down here then go into the object settings then in the object color here right click and select insert keyframe and go to frame 60 uh, turn the alpha down to nothing right click insert a, another keyframe and so now if you drag along it will get bigger and fade out and the next thing I'm going to do with this dust selected is I'm going to add an always sensor and action actuator and I'm going to join the two together Then I'm going to choose dust action and it's going to start from frame 0 and at frame 60 and so now if we press P there we go, it'll scale out like so and then also what I want it to do is move upwards so I'm going to add a motion actuator and we want it to move upwards uh, possibly in the X direction so uh, I'm going to change it to local here and it's going to be negative x so we'll choose that here maybe 0.2 or just 0.1 I think that might even be a bit much so maybe negative 0.005 uh, that should be good and we'll join that up to the same one now if we go to layer 1 uh, and change it back to global then we'll press numpad 0, press P, shoot the floor, and we sort of got it working, but it's just splashing out from the ground. So I mean, if you wanted that, you could add that one in as well, uh, but I want it shooting upwards and sort of floating off, so I'm going to go back to layer 2. This dust, first of all, is way too big, so we're going to go to frame 60, press S to scale, and maybe something like that at the most. Then press I, insert scaling, 
go to frame 0, press S, and then press I, insert scaling, so we want it to be nice and small, and then I'm going to select it, and press tab, and then R, Y, 90, and then I'm going to press enter, and then tab again, and now we'll go back to layer 1, press numpad 0, press P, and there we go, I think we just had it then, yep, there we go, but it wasn't exactly moving upwards fast enough. So again, it's too big, so I'm going to go back to frame 0, press S, make it really small this time, I insert scaling, and that is way too big, so S, and something like that, I insert scaling, then we'll go to layer 1 again, press 0, press P, and there you go, you can sort of see it but it doesn't seem to be moving up very fast um, if it is at all so I'm going to turn up the speed to maybe negative 0.2 and press P and it is moving in the wrong direction and so for the dust to work properly we need to select um, 0.1 on the Z axis and then we can press P and we can shoot and there we go our dust floats up but a little bit too fast for my liking so I'm going to change it to 0 0.005 and then press P and there we go we have our dust popping up um, but again I know that might be a bit slow for me so I'm going to change it to 0 0.05 and then I'm going to press P and try it out and there we go okay and to make this effect a little bit more obvious and possibly a little better. First of all, I'm going it's still too big for my liking, so back to frame 0, pressing S, and then I insert scaling, then to frame 60, S, I insert scaling, and then down here in the texture tab actually, we want to select 0.4, and then we'll just see how that goes, so numpad 0, press P, there we go, and now we got little puffs of smoke appearing where we shoot the floor. So again, if that is too small for you and you want it to, to be a little bigger, then feel free to turn up the size. That's pretty much it, guys. So that's how to get bullet holes and sparks and dust working in the Blender Game Engine. I hope you found this uh, little tutorial series a little more helpful than the sort of starting series I did. Hopefully now you have nice looking bullet holes and dust and sparks and all that awesome stuff in your FPS shooters. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like, comment, or share, it's all greatly appreciated, uh, but until then, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.